What's up guys? Let's see the top 10 Microsoft programming questions. So the first question is reverse words in a string. So if you are, have a sentence that has three words, knowledge, center, YouTube, then you should return YouTube center knowledge. So it's like speaking the sentence with words in a reversed order. So uh, Master Yoda would be very happy. Hmm, reversing the words you are. So if you remember, I had also discussed this question while discussing the top 10 Amazon interview questions. So uh, really this question is has been asked quite frequently. Now let's see the next question. So next is implementing the LRU CAS and this is also a very popular question. So in this case uh, you have to implement a CAS and that CAS will have some capacity C and the CAS should be evicted based on the usage of certain key. So if some key is not used very frequently, not used for a long time and the capacity is full and then you put a new key and value, then that key value should be removed, the earlier one that has not been used for a certain period of time. You need to implement get key. If the key exists, you have to get that and you, have, you should have a function to put the key and value. Next question is longest happy string. So a string is happy if uh, it's formed only using the letters small a, small b and small c. And the requirement is that you cannot have three consecutive characters, same characters. So you cannot have a, a, a or similarly b, b, b or even more. So, so at max you can have a single a or a double a. And then uh, you have some values like uh, these values a1, b1, c7. That means you are uh, you can use at max 7c, 1b and 1a. So what is the longest happy string that you can form? So in this case, you add 2c, then 1a, then again 2c, 1b, then again 2c. So you see that you just use 6c's because you cannot put 7c anywhere. If you put in the beginning, you get 3c's. So that violates... Similarly, you cannot put anywhere else. So this is the question. Next is longest palindromic substring. So first of all, substring. When you see substring or subsequence, you should be careful. Substring is the contiguous substring, contiguous part of the given string. While subsequence does not need to be contiguous, but the ordering of letters should be same. So here it's substring. So you should just pick a subset of this entire string. It can start from somewhere and it should end at one of these positions. So in this case the longest contiguous substring which is a palindrome is ABA or similarly you can have this part BAB both have a length of 3. Let's see the next question. So median of two sorted arrays. So you have two sorted arrays and the median. So median is uh, the number that divides a given set of values exactly in two halves. So you will write uh, here 1, 2, then we have 5, 6, 6. So these are the five numbers here. So 5 is the value that divides this in two halves. The right half has two elements, left half has two elements. So 5 is the median in this case. In some cases, uh, the median may not be the number that is already present in the array. It can be some different value also. And you are supposed to do it in log m plus n, n time and not linear time. It's a logarithmic time. Let's see the next question. So the next is number of islands. It's a standard uh, graph problem where uh, you have some connectivity rules. Let's say we have just top down, left, right, four neighbor connectivity rules. And using that, you see that ones are the land zero is the water so the number of islands in this case is three this is one land this is a small piece of land and then we have another land here so there are three islands here in this question so you can use uh, some graph traversal uh, approach here and return the value and time complexity is expected to be of the order of the time taken by a bfs or dfs so let's see the next question it's called find n unique integers that sum up to zero. So if you are given three, then that means you have to find three unique integers whose sum is zero. 
so there can be multiple possible answers for this problem one simple approach is that if n is odd then take the number line include the zero take one of the numbers in the left side let's say minus 5 in the right side take plus 5 so this is for 3 if it's 5 then add 1 1 symmetrically from each side but you are it's not a requirement it's just one approach so the next question is count the good nodes in binary tree so uh, first of all you need to understand the good nodes so good node is a node which if you start from root and there would be some path to reach that node so uh, from root to that node all the nodes are less than or equal to that node current node then that node is a good node so you have to count the number of good nodes in a given binary tree so for example in this case is 4 a good node yes because it's the root so the path includes just this node so 4 is a root will be a good node next is 2 a good node no because you go from 4 to 2 so 4 is larger than 2 so 4 2 is not a good node this 4 is a good node you take this path similarly this 5 5 is a good node 6 is also a good node but this 2 is again not a good node because you take this path and 5 is larger than 2 so in this case these two are not good node the remaining four nodes are good node so in this case the answer should be 4 the next problem is angle between the hands of a clock so you will be given some hour and minute in this case hour is 3 minute is 30 and you have to return this angle which is 75 degrees in this case now see let's see the last problem it's called distribute coins in a binary tree so you have a binary tree so in this case the binary tree has three nodes so you will have total of three coins and it will not be at uh, some nodes will have zero coins some nodes will have more more coins but in essence the total values of all the coins all the coin values will be equal to number of nodes in the binary tree so the problem is that one coin has to be placed on each node so the number of coins is same as number of nodes but some nodes will have multiple coins some nodes will have can also have zero coins so how many moves it will take to distribute the coins so that each node has a coin and the number of moves by number of uh, moves you mean moving the coin from to adjacent nodes it can be either to its children or to its parent so both of these moves are allowed so let's see the example here this node has three coins the other two has zero zero coins so the number of nodes is three number of coins is three so one move you place a coin here so this will have one this will have two and the number of moves is one then again move one coin now this has one and this has two so two moves are there now move one coin from here to here now this has one this also has one and the third one also has one so in three moves you can distribute the coin so i hope uh, you uh, understood all these problems so please practice these first these are not a complete list but these will give you some good starting point and these are very frequently asked so if you are lucky you may also face similar problem in your interviews so all the best